Hare Krishna, uh, thank you very much for your coming to the lecture of Bhagavad Gita again. We are together just to discuss amongst us the beautiful uh, commentaries and translation made of Srila Prabhupada. He was so merciful to us, so give such opportunity again and again, uh, sit together and uh, just enjoy his uh, uh, transcendental message to us. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Namar Chajiva Narottamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayet Nashta Prayashva Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Nahayate Girim Yat Kripatamaham Vandeshi Gurum Dina Tarinam Today we are reading from uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita uh, uh, Chapter 10 Text 11 the chapter entitled The Opulence of the Absolute. Tesham Evano Kampartham Aham Agyana Jam Tamaha Nashayamya Atma Pavastro Jnana Dipena Basvata uh, Word by word translation Tesham For them Eva Certainly Anukampartham To show special mercy Aham I Agyana Jam Due to ignorance, tamaha, darkness, nashayami, dispel, atma bhava, within their hearts, strach, strach, situated, jnana, of knowledge, dipena, with the lamp, basvata, glowing. Uh, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace Abhay Charanara Vinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Jai Prabhupada To show them special mercy I, dwelling in their hearts destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance Puppet. When Lord Chaitanya was in Benares promulgating the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thousands of people were following him. Prakashananda Saraswati, a very influential and learned scholar in Benares at that time, derided Lord Chaitanya for being a sentimentalist. Sometimes, Mayavadi philosophers criticize the devotees because they think that most of the devotees are in the darkness of ignorance and are philosophically naive sentimentalists. Actually, that is not the fact. There are very, very learned scholars who have put forward the philosophy of devotion. But even if a devotee does not take advantage of their literatures or 
of his spiritual master. If he's sincere in his devotional service, he's held by Krishna himself within his heart. So the sincere devotee engaged in Krishna consciousness cannot be without knowledge. The only qualification is that one carry out devotional service in full Krishna consciousness. The Mayavadi philosophers think that without discriminating, one cannot have pure knowledge. For them, this answer is given by the Supreme Lord. Those who are engaged in pure devotional service, even though they be without sufficient education and even without sufficient knowledge of the Vedic principles, are still helped by the Supreme God, as stated in this verse. The Lord tells Arjuna that basically there is no possibility of understanding the supreme truth, the absolute truth, the supreme personality of Godhead, simply by speculating for the supreme truth, for the supreme truth is so great that it is not possible to understand him or to achieve him simply by making a mental effort. Man can go on speculating for several millions of years, and if he is not devoted, if he is not a lover of the supreme truth, he will never understand Krishna of the supreme truth. Only by devotional service is the supreme truth Krishna pleased, and by his inconceivable energy he can reveal himself to the heart of the pure devotee. The pure devotee always has Krishna within his heart. And with the presence of Krishna, who is just like the sun, the darkness of ignorance is at once dis dissipated. This is the special mercy rendered to the pure devotee by Krishna. Due to the contamination of material association, through many, many millions of births, one's heart is always covered with the dust of materialism. But when one engages in devotional service and constantly chants Hare Krishna, the dust quickly clears and one is elevated to the platform of pure knowledge. The ultimate goal, Vishnu, can be attained only by this chant and by devotional service and not by mental speculation or argument. The pure devotee does not have to worry about the material necessities of life. He need not be anxious because when he removes the darkness from his heart, everything is provided automatically by the Supreme Lord, who is pleased by the loving devotional service of the devotee. This is the essence of teachings of Bhagavad Gita. By studying Bhagavad Gita, one can become a soul completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord and engage himself in pure devotional service. As the Lord takes charge, one becomes completely free from all kinds of materialistic endeavors. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupah Kadam Mahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sagravjatam Sahagana Rahunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sava Tutam Parijana Sahita Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shiratha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shivishakhan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Ratha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Rade Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpata Rubyasha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patita Nam Pava Nipyo Vaishnavi Pyo Namo Namaha Nam Shuddhaya 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 Hare Krishna Thank you very much for your coming and I want to share with you whatever I have realization from the platform of my realization Everybody has, uh, has his own uh, platform from which he can speak. We cannot jump uh, above our head. Everybody has his own uh, uh, level on which he, uh, which he reached now. 
therefore, but it's Shila uh, Prabhupada's uh, uh, method. Even the, his disciples just came to the Krishna consciousness uh, there in a matchless gift on, uh, uh, in New York. He was forcing them to give uh, Bhagavad Gita classes. Uh, uh, he was telling to them, you're already uh, one month in Krishna consciousness. You should give a class. And he was enjoying, Srila Prabhupada was enjoying by listening the uh, uh, classes of his disciples. It was like a child who speaks, but Srila Prabhupada was enjoyed by that, like real father, loving father. He listens his loving child, and it was very sweet, sweet relationship. We don't need this... Uh, uh, very high scholarships because myself I came from the scientific background uh, I'm PhD in nuclear physics so all my life I was uh, uh, devoted to this uh, studies of uh, uh, nuclear physics and I did my PhD in uh, St. Petersburg in uh, 80s um, 1985 1987 something like that 10 years and uh, working with radioactive elements. This is also energy of Krishna. And I got some uh, radiation after that. We were young, we were just 25 years old. We didn't know what was, will be sequences. We just wanted to get more quickly the PhD, diploma, and go ahead. So, nevertheless, Srila Prabhupada uh, always tells that uh, so many universities in the world and they're giving so many knowledge about only material things and he says this is useless knowledge this is uh, knowledge which you can use only in the material world but we are not belongs to this material world we are spiritual sparks we are part and parcels of lord krishna and we belong to uh, the spiritual world uh, as a uh, all material world, all the uh, universe is combined of two energies of the Lord. There are only two energies of the Lord. Combination of these two energies, spiritual and material. They have some divisions inside, but mostly two energies only, very simple. Uh, spiritual and material. And we are belong to the more higher, we are more higher than material prakriti energy, than material prakriti energy. We are much more higher. But uh, due to our association with material nature, we are, our mind is accumulated so much dust which should be cleansed away. And then we can understand and establish our real relationships with our eternal Father, Shri Krishna, Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is only goal of life. Everything is very simple. Srila Prabhupada said this Krishna consciousness is very simple but difficult to practice continuously up to end, or up to last breaths of your life. We should continuously uh, practice this. This is difficult for conditioned souls because we tend to have some enjoyment in our life, our sense is demanding some enjoyment and we tend to go on the side followed by these senses and we're falling down and for many many lives we are still in the material world. Nobody keeps us in the material world. Nobody. Only we, ourselves, we are keeping ourselves here. And everybody responsible for his life, for his going back to Krishna, back to God, uh, to God here, to Krishna, we can do this in one moment. Like this uh, King Khatwanga. In one moment, he just uh, went from spiritual, uh, from the uh, uh, Indra Loka just to earth. She is, uh, abandoned all his uh, riches, all his wives, sons, all his wealth, and just left body and gone to Krishna. 
So it is uh, only uh, up to us how we will quickly will we go to Krishna. So in this verse, I uh, took some some writings just to uh, tell some uh, points which I, I was thinking it's quite important to know. Every day we are having uh, Srimad Bhagavatam class in evening 5.30. In morning 8 o'clock we have Srimad Bhagavatam class. This is a rule established by Srila Prabhupada. Morning time is given for Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? Why not change? Srimad Bhagavad Gita morning and evening time Srimad Bhagavatam. No. Morning time when consciousness in completely sattva kun, sattva guna dominating and our consciousness quite pure. So at that time we are discussing the leelas, the relationships between Supreme Lord and his devotees which are narrated in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is full of these narrations. And from the morning time, we are enjoying by this, for one hour, discussing uh, with each other, listening and then discussing. And we are full of that energy. All cells of our body, of our brain, becomes filled with that high energy. And we are becoming inspired Oh yes, why I am here in this material world? I should go more quickly to Krishna and enjoy in his association, in association of his pure devotees. And we are so inspired, so, uh, we are so inspired, so we are ready to perform the devotional service. It is not easy to perform it. It's quite heavy. Because devotional service means loving devotional service. It made voluntarily, nobody forcing you. You should do it by love. Krishna accepts only love. He doesn't need our service. In the spiritual world, thousands, thousands, millions, millions of Lakshmi Devi serves to him. This Lakshmi Devi is the most beautiful ladies in our plan, on material plan, you cannot find such beautiful ladies. So this thousands, millions of them serving to Krishna on Vaikuntha. And what they are doing from early morning just to please Lord Narayan. They are in very nice uh, saris, very uh, uh, very, very, uh, uh, they dress very nicely. So they are going, and by the uh, uh, the anchal of the saris, they are cleaning the chintamani stones from which built the uh, uh, palace of Lord Narayan. And Lord Narayan at that time going nearby, and what he is seeing. All the Lakshmi Devis, they engage in cleaning the walls of his palace. And he smiles to them. He is pleased. Immediately everything changes. Everybody becomes pleased and happy. And this uh, an Ananda, this Ananda goes like the sun all around. But there is no dust in Vaikuntha. Vaikunka is a place where no miseries, no any miseries. Dust is also misery. You just cleanse and uh, cleanse, and after one hour you see again the dust. Again you should clean. And it is quite heavy work in material world. But there it gives the only uh, happiness. This is our world, not this world. This is world uh, derived of uh, light. There is darkness. Sun comes only eight, nine hours. But there is more dark uh, region of uh, planetary system, Narakas, where no sun at all. And they put this artificial sun, these demons, they are very clever in, materi in materialistic way. So Maya Danova. So they are putting the on orbit the artificial sun and this artificial sun goes around this Narakaloka and gives the artificial light to these plan planets of Nagas. They are mostly Nagas, living Nagas. Big, big snakes. 
but they have big civilization and they're enjoying like anything. They're satisfied by their life. So Krishna never forces anybody to do something which against his nature. He said, you want to stay in material world? Okay, you can stay. I will fulfill your desire. But what he does, just in the uh, 10 shlokas, today's 11th verse, and 10 shlokas before, what we, we are reading? We are reading about this uh, chapter entitled The uh, Opulence of the Supreme. The Opulence of the Absolute, of the Absolute Truth. How many opulences Krishna has? How many? Ah? Unlimited, because he is unlimited. He, we cannot limit Krishna by any number. But the main opulences is a six. Six opulences. In this Parashara Muni, he brings them and he said, these six opulences Krishna performs, uh, manifests here in this material world, in Vrindavan, 5,000 years back, in full, 100%. No one uh, ordinary person, conditioned soul, can perform such opulences. So, and Parasharamuni says, so, because he in full manifests these uh, opulences, he's Bhagavan. This is definition of Bhagavan. One who can perform uh, such activities and present the opulences in full. This is Bhagavan. So Krishna is Bhagavan. And after Parashara Muni, so many sages, they are uh, uh, saying, yes, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No one can be like him. So in ninth chapter, which we are just finished, we are uh, uh, t uh, telling that this chapter entitled The Most Confidential Knowledge. And Srila Prabhupada says, he just even wrote the small book named King of the Knowledge. This is ninth chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which is King of the Knowledge, the highest knowledge. But then here, Srila Prabhupada in commentary says, states that 11th chapter is uh, this chapter, 10th chapter, even more higher. What can be higher than the most confidential knowledge? And Srila Prabhupada explains. He explains in a very simple way. I like Srila Prabhupada's explanation. He doesn't go to the difficult philosophical mental speculations like Mayavadis. No. He speaks very simple and he speaks exactly at the point. So everybody can understand. And what he says, he says this is even more confidential knowledge. Why? Because in ninth chapter, Krishna gives only, he little bit opens the door to the confidential knowledge. He says to Arjuna, you are not this body. You not belong to this material world. You are in part and parcel of me, your spirit soul. And more, more, more. If in seven uh, chapter up to ninth chapter, he's giving uh, a description of his various energies. He has so many energies. You understand me? My English is okay? <laughs> Please excuse me if sometimes my accent is not uh, good. You can uh, correct me. So he has unlimited energies and he has like musician plays on the piano. He plays on these energies and he creates all these material universes and spiritual also. He creates new, so many varieties. And he creates all kinds of uh, living beings. Why he does so? For which purpose? He was only one before the creation. And he will be only one after destroying all the creation. After Pralaya, he, he remains only one. But before creation, in, in cre between creation and Pralaya, all the living beings 
enjoying and suffering the karma. And this uh, uh, planet Earth is the chok, like in Hindi, chok, this way. Crossing. Ah, crossing, yeah, crossing of the way. Chok. Yeah, chok. The planet or Earth, that's why it is so important. And we are very, very fortunate that we born on this planet. Doesn't matter, in America, in uh, Uzbekistan, <laughs> in Australia, or in India. No, Indian people is more fortunate. And more fortunate those one who born in Bharata, Varsha. And those from them, the most fortunate those who born in Brindavan, Brijabasis, the eternal uh, servitors of the Lord. So Krishna opens in ninth chapter very, very slowly. He not gives to Arjuna, even Arjuna, his dear most friend, his pure devotee of the Lord. That's why he tells to him all this knowledge. For example, uh, if we never invite to our home somebody whom we don't know, it's dangerous to invite to your home somebody whom you don't know very well. But if you know person very well for a long time and very close, you're happy to invite him. For which purpose? To share your opulences. Just show. You see what I have. You can share with me and appreciate what I have and discuss with me my opulences. It will give me my very big pleasure. This is nature of the human beings. And especially Vaishnavas. They like, they love to share whatever they have with their their most friends. So we are following to Krishna's behavior. So he opens in ninth chapter uh, to Krishna, uh, to Arjuna, very slowly. He opens a little bit of this most uh, 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 intimate, transcendental, most uh, intimate knowledge. But then in tenth canto, he goes further. He opens more. Before he was saying about his energies. Energies is impersonal. Some energies. Energies playing, doing everything. And uh, some dull man, uh, ordinary man. He says, oh, this Prakriti, she creates everything. She's mother. She creates everything. And this uh, here in uh, uh, seventh, eighth uh, text, Srila Prabhupada said, no. Prakriti, she's not mother actually. We are coming from Krishna. He's giving this bija, the seed. We are coming from Krishna. He doesn't need any woman to create something, to uh, create Brahma. He doesn't need any woman. He created Brahma, Lord Brahma, by his energy himself. From his navel came the lotus and on this lotus appeared Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma didn't know who created him. He looked around and he saw only the ocean, nothing else. For thousand years he was meditating to who created him, for which purpose I am created. Who created me and for which purpose. And he came to understand all this because uh, Lord Narayan put uh, Vishnu, he put the knowledge to his heart. And he understood that he is secondary but creator of this world. And first of all, he created this uh, Fokumaras, pra Prajapatis, 14 uh, uh, Manus, and then seven sages. And the creation is started. So, this is uh, cyclic, uh, cyclic, cyclic, again and again comes the creation, then uh, maintenance, and uh, the uh, destruction. This is a cyclic process, again and again, again and again. And this is means samsara, we are in this samsara. And our goal come out of that samsara. Vaishnavas don't want to rotate uh, that samsara. It's boring. 
during the Jewit, again and again, same thing. We should go out of that samsara because the spiritual world waits for us. The variegatedness of spiritual activities. You can do everything, wh what, whatever your desire. And it is so enjoyable because <coughs> you're doing it in association with pure devotees of the Lord. So Arjuna gets this knowledge. And uh, uh, why Krishna does this? Why he opens this, his opulences, even to Arjuna? Arjuna only one. How you think? Arjuna only one who got this knowledge? Through Arjuna, we are getting. He's in Parampara because uh, uh, the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita was lost. And uh, Arjuna becomes the first after that. Because uh, Krishna said, you not remember Arjuna? We were in, uh, with uh, uh, God's son, Vivaswan, and I was telling to you all this knowledge. Arjuna d doesn't remember because his uh, conditioned soul, his ordinary soul, Atma, but Krishna remembers. So he wants to uh, make Arjuna the first perceptor of this knowledge and makes him the uh, beginning of Parampara. So, in this, uh, uh, f from first to ten, uh, Krishna uh, slowly, slowly will uh, manifest, display his viphutis, these six main viphutis. And uh, he's the most, uh, the for women, the, the most beautiful. I always started with this Vibhuti because the feminine nature, we are more attracted by the beauty of the Lord. That's why for ladies to come to Krishna is more easier than to Prabhu's. <laughs> yes, because ladies just seeing, or the ladies of Madhura, of Vrindavan, when uh, Krishna enters with Balaram to the Madhura city, all the ladies, they were on the roof. They said, you just look how he beautiful. You look to his eyes. They rem resemble the lotus, uh, these uh, petals. You see how he's going. You just see who is, what's the name of this uh, man, uh, young boy. All of them were uh, attracted by him. And Krishna doesn't like to listen the uh, hymns uh, Vedic hymns recited by Brahminas who are doing the yagyas and the, 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 the giving their no, he likes to listen this lady's speech because it makes him so feeling good like homely atmosphere just he's surrounded by his very uh, close friends so Krishna has such opulences and whenever we, any, anyone who will uh, trust Krishna to his words in Bhagavad Gita and feel, yes, he's Bhagavan because he displays such viputis. In the uh, five, seven years old boy, he on the s small uh, finger of his left hand, he, he was seven days keeping the Govardhan. Who can do this? No one, uh, even the gigantic the, the sportsman, or, uh, he cannot do this. He shows us so many uh, uh, examples of his lilas just to attract us to the spiritual world. Because in spiritual world, this is very, very much possible to see all this stuff. And this uh, atmosphere in material world, very dark and boring. We are on duty. We are, according to our duty, we are performing all the activities here. We are in, uh, uh, but we are more fortunate than other people who are outside of ISKCON and they are working very hard just for getting some little bit money just for uh, eating 
It is sleeping, mating, defending, so it's four animalistic tendencies. Srila Prabhupada said, if we are doing only this four animalistic tendencies, we are not, uh, we have no any difference from the animals. But for human being, given the buddhi, this intelligence, and he will tell here, to in this verse, and before, in uh, verse 10, he tells uh, Arjuna, do you remember Arjuna? I told you, I gave you promise that I will tell you about Buddhi Yoga. He says this in chapter 2. He said they described so many yogas. Mystic Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga. and the But he said, but after all this, I will tell you about Buddhi Yoga. And in this chapter, he will tell to Arjuna about Buddhi Yoga. Buddhi yoga, Buddhi means intelligence, and yoga means link with the supreme action in Krishna consciousness. Buddhi yoga, person who acts in uh, Buddhi yoga, Buddhi yoga means Bhakti yoga, acts in the consciousness of Krishna. Whatever he does, what it, whatever he performs, he does for the pleasure of the Lord, not for sensual pleasure of himself. He forgets about his body. He understood, I am not this body. I belong to Krishna. I am Atma, spiritual spark. But this body also not mine. It also belongs to Krishna. Everything belongs to Krishna. We have nothing. But then, what's our duty? Just please Krishna. Just make him happy. As soon as you have, you made your Master, happy, immediately you becoming happy. How much happiness needs for our Atma? Very little, very little. But Krishna gives uh, much more than we need. So here, Srila Prabhupada mentioned about Mayavadi impersonalist in Benares. I was nearby Benares. I forget, uh, I was a little bit... Uh, 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 um, afraid to go inside of Benares. I saw many impersonalist uh, sannyasis there with three lines on the forehead. And uh, in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu even tells that don't look to their forehead, to these three lines. You will be contaminated. You see? So there are Mayavadis uh, impersonal, impersonal is uh, actually divided into two big categories, the Mayavadis and Brahmavadis. And they are different, their philosophy is different, and their goal is different. Brahmavadis, we know these four Kumaras, sons of Lord Brahma, first sons of Lord Brahma. He created them with the aim that these four Kumaras will marry, because his father, he created four sons and he was uh, uh, desiring that these four sons will marry and they will uh, make the earth, planet earth, on whole Brahmananda, not only earth, all the 14 planetary systems was empty. He wanted to populate, to put somebody to live, that life should start. Nobody was there, only Brahma, and he created four sons, four Kumaras. But this four Kumaras said, no, father, we don't want to marry. He became so angry with them. Because they refused to uh, make the, what father demands. Why? Because they got the knowledge of Brahman. What is it, Brahman? Like in Srimad Bhagavatam, it said, I will tell you uh, which uh, 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 Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, 11, verse 11. Vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yad gyanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabdhyate. And what he is saying? Those who are actually knowers of the absolute truth know that the self means Atma, 
is realized in three phases as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. And what is it Brahman? Brahman is just the, the, the lowest aspect of the absolute truth. Like you're seeing mountains very far, few, few kilometers and in, in front of you mountains and from the 10, uh, 100 kilometers you're seeing just mountain. What's the use? Just something on the fork, some mountain. But Paramatma, the localized aspect of the um, absolute truth, is much more closer. You came closer to that mountain and you climb on it. You see all oh, this, uh, some green grass, flowers, some stones, different colors. Oh, good. Paramatma is much better. Understanding of the absolute. But this is also not full. Brahma, Brahman aspect, aspect of Lord, gives the Brahmananda, Brahma Ananda. And this Mayavadis, this impersonals after this Brahmananda. And Srila Prabhupada compares this Brahmananda as a drop of water in the desert. You want to drink very hot, you are in desert. And suddenly from the sky, one drop of water comes to you. You, you can be happy with that, but it doesn't satisfy the self, the Atma. Atma needs much more. Paramatma is better, but only the aspect of Bhagavan. Srila Prabhupada said, said, this platform of understanding of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the perfection of knowledge. Perfection of our knowledge. This is simple. Everybody knows this verse. Everything simple. Why are we again and again repeating the same thing? Because Srila Prabhupada said, those things which are very important needed to be repeated again and again, again and again. Why? Because we are conditioned, conditioned souls. We are forgetful of everything. We are remembering only short period of time. Our brain is very dull, especially in Kali Yuga. We are forgetting everything. We were in the spiritual world. Who, who remembers? Who was, uh, who, uh, what you are doing in spiritual world at those time? What kind of body, your spiritual body? But everything, we experience this one. But suddenly we wanted to be uh, enjoying in the uh, material world without Krishna. So this four Kumaras becomes Brahmavadis. I am from that, uh, from that, uh, how to say, campus <laughs> of Brahmavadis. Brahmavadis, those who knows Brahman. Brahman. And what's that Brahman? Brahman has no form. He's eternal. He has no guna, no qualities, nothing, just ocean non-moving ocean of bliss. No any relationship. You cannot establish relationship with Brahman. How you will establish relation with Brahman? He has no qualities. He has no colors. He has whitish with violet. This is color of Brahman. If lady wears white with violet color, it means she's in Brahman. Brahma Kumaris. They never marries, never married, so they have this, such colors of Brahman. No need nothing, just meditation, just uh, being without guna. So Mayavad is doing this. And Paramatma, this is mystic yogis. They're going to the uh, jungle or to the mountains, into the cave, and meditating on the Paramatma feature of the Lord in their heart. This is much better much better because who is paramatma paramatma actually is the chaitya guru chaitya guru who gives within the knowledge intuition even to the animals like uh, on the uh, winter season the uh, uh, this uh, birds flying to the hot countries they have no compass they have no cart. How they know how to fly exactly to the 
place and they have shortcut. They're not taking long way like this. No, they're going exactly shortcut, very short distance to this place. How they know? And Srila Prabhupada is saying, because Paramatma leading them to that place. So Paramatma is very important. And this much more higher realization of Supreme Personality of Godhead than uh, Brahman feature. But Paramatma as a in uh, the uh, like uh, courtyard, this uh, in court, this uh, some uh, sitting the men who uh, judge, judge, makes judgment. Somebody kills somebody, and he makes the judgment and brings the resolution what to do with this man. But he says, "No, I didn't kill. I'm not. You please don't blame me. I didn't do this." But he takes these so many information from different, different people and he judges him, judges, and he said, no, he should be hanged because he killed the person. You see? So Paramatma is the judge. It gives only resolution. Do this, do that. How we can make intimate relationship with judge? It's impossible. He judge, he judges only, he gives the resolution, nothing else. So Srila Prabhupada leads us, he leads us, don't stay on Brahman platform, don't stay on Paramatma platform, don't stay, go further to the highest perfection of knowledge, to the platform of Bhagavan. And Bhagavan has unlimited opulence which he displays in any relationship with any conditioned soul. With different conditions, souls, he dis displays different uh, opulences. And it's very, very wonderful. And you're becoming so enlightened. And you want to play with Krishna in different ways. We have five rasas. So in different rasas, you can play with Krishna. Even neutral rasa is a very high. Durvasamuni in neutral rasa. And he enjoys this rasa. He just sits and looks to Krishna. And Krishna sitting and looks to him. For f many hours, they sitting just looking to each other. And then Krishna says, oh, this is too boring. And he took the Durasa Muni's bear like this. <laughs> and he uh, ran away to his uh, sakha, to this uh, playboys with whom he plays. Krishna also likes to play in different rasas. That's why we should not stay in the, on the platform of Bhagavan. We have different, 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 different departments. So why Krishna comes here and displays all these opulences? Just to prove, I am Bhagavan. I am only one. And I am, I am created all these uh, uh, universes. I created Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, four Kumaras, seven sages, all Manus, all the Prajapatis, everybody created by me. And all the demigods and the sages, they don't know me. And who knows him? How somebody can know the Krishna? We have small brain, very dull small brain. How we can understand unlimited Supreme Personality of Godhead? It is possible. And he says here just now, he said, only through pure devotional service to me. Even you are unintelligent, illiterate. You cannot read. You are illiterate. You cannot do this. You can just think about Krishna. You just repeat his names, recite his holy names, and do some devotional service to him. But do this devotional service sincere with love. Krishna needs only love, nothing else. He doesn't need anything, he has everything. But he, from us, he wants only love. And if he will, he will, we will give to him this love, we will gain much more. Eternal life of bliss in spiritual world, where you will be engaged in those uh, varieties of uh, uh, actions which you like. 
Somebody likes dance, somebody likes paint, somebody wants to cook for Krishna, somebody wants to play with Krishna, somebody going, uh, when you will read this, uh, uh, how Gopakumar reached the Golok Vrindavan on the top, topmost planet. So uh, that's why it can be a long uh, way, but I will conclude my this uh, presentation with uh, everybody knows this shloka, but again repeating, it's, uh, it's no harm, it brings us enlightenment. This is Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.1.11, he said, Anya Pilashita Shunyam Gyana Karmadya Pavritam Anukulyena Krishnanu Shilanam Bhaktir Uttama. So to get this pure devotional service, pure devotional service. Shila Rupa Goswami very strict. This is uh, Rupa Manjari. He's the main manjari of Shimati Radhika in Golok Vrindavana. And we are Rupa Nugas. We are followers of uh, Rupa Goswami, nobody else. Exactly, Rupa Goswami's followers. And what he said, Rupa Goswami to us, he gives the definition of pure devotional service, Uttama Bhakti, highest Bhakti to Krishna. And he said, Uttama Bhakti means, first, do actions, pure devotional service, means make actions favorable to Krishna, not favorable for us. I, wa I want to do this for Krishna, no. You do what Krishna likes, favorable to Krishna. Second, you should be free from all kind of extra external motivations. Oh, I will do this for Krishna and then he will give me this or that. Oh, no, no motives, just love. I'm doing this because I love Krishna. I want him please. He will love Oh. It will be so good for me. And third one, uh, our actions, pure devotional service, should be devoid of fruitive karma. Oh, I will do something for Krishna and I will get something for me. This uh, nobody seeing. I have so many and I will get more. And then uh, should be free from selfish desires. No any selfish desires and uh, free from all impersonalism. This Shunyavadi, this philosophy of Shunyavadi is too developed, especially in this Kali Yuga, because very uh, recent, like uh, how many, two, three thousand years back, Lord uh, Buddha came, and the, I'm from that campus because I was born in Muslim country, in Muslim family. All my relatives Muslim. It means Brahmavadis. They know Brahman. They know Paramatma also. Because in my, when I was childhood, in my childhood, the, uh, my neighbor, lady, she's saying, oh, the Atma, she said, the soul is a small bird on the tree of the body. And this bird sits where the hut, on the branch of the hut, sits small bird. And at the time of death, this bird just flies out of the body and person dies. You imagine? They know there's some Atma about Atma, but this is Muslim people, very fanatic Muslim people. They're saying about soul, about Atma which sits in the heart. And I remember this up to now. So, because I belong to these Brahmavadis, what's saying uh, for Kumaras, it was very close to me. But this, how change, how Lord changed the uh, for Kumaras uh, vision? Very simple. They, they just came to Vaikuntha because they're small boys, very inquisitive. Oh, how they in uh, Vaikuntha, how it's going on? They came to Vaikuntha, but Jai Vijay closed the do door, they not in, in, uh, uh, allow his, them to come inside. And suddenly Lord Narayan came out. He came out. Uh, the four Kumaras never enter inside. Jaya Vijay not allow them to go. They, they have n had no qualification to go inside of Vaikuntha. So Lord came out and they just uh, make obeisances to his lotus feet and they smell the uh, 
of Tulsi on the lotus feet of Narayana completely changed their mind. They became, became Vaishnavas. So, so easy, so easy in one moment they became per personalists. You see? So, uh, myself, I'm only one person from whole nation. I came here from Uzbekistan. Somehow or other, Krishna make me only one representative from whole nation uh, and I'm in, uh, trying to uh, render some devotional service and, and I'm trying for 30 years now, 28 years here in Vrindavan, I'm trying to make my pure de devotional service pure, uttama. It is not easy. Time is going on, we are getting old, and uh, strength is going on, and this, 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 so many things happening. But nevertheless, Shila, uh, last, mom, last very important point, uh, uh, Krishna said, I heard it myself in the lecture of uh, Shila Prabhupada, he said, Krishna says that any living being he should try very, very heavily to keep life in his body. He should not endure this body with some gymnastics, drinking, smoking, or doing some so many activities, nonsense. He should try to keep the uh, life inside as much as possible, up to end. And if on the end, he lies down on the death bed. Even there, we should keep the breathing, trying to breathe, to keep the life in this body. But if we do, do last breath, and we cannot do next, in this time, Krishna says, this is not your fault then this is not your fault if you cannot anymore to do this. So Krishna looks after us. He looks from inside as Chaitya Guru and within gives the knowledge. Even for illiterate devotional service you're doing, you're illiterate, you cannot understand uh, philosophy, no Sanskrit, nothing, nothing, nothing. Doesn't matter. It doesn't give anything to us. Even Shankaracharya said to his followers, Bajja Govinda, Bajja Govinda, Bajja Govinda, oh, the fools to his followers. You don't think, you chant Govinda's name. Don't think that at the time of death, this Sanskrit rules, grammar rules will help you. It will not help you. You can make uh, perfect your Sanskrit, but it will not help at the time of death. Bajja Govinda, Bajja Govinda, Bajja Govinda. So uh, we are chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. This is the most sublime vibrations comes from spiritual world. And in this Hare Krishna Mahamantra, 16 words, they are full of potencies of the Lord. And all the mantras in the Vedic literature, all the Vedas, full of mantras, this Hare Krishna Mahamantra, he, it keeps in itself all the potency of all the mantras, all the Vedic literatures. So powerful. And it is given in this Kali Yuga. In other Kali Yugas, there is no Mahamantra. This Kali Yuga. Because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared here 500 years back. And he's by his the most munificent feature of the Lord, incarnation of the Lord, he freely gives to everybody the price only. What price for Hare Krishna Mahamantra? Faith, yes, Laulyam and faith. Faith, faith. Shraddha. Even small Shraddha you have, he will give you something which costs million, million, million. We have no, no money to pay for that. He gives that. That's why we are very fortunate. We are born in, on this planet Earth with a chalk in uh, this Kali Yuga, which enlightened by appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we already liberated all of us, every, because uh, this, uh, uh, what's the name of him uh, who said, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please deliver all this, Vasudeva Datta, Vasudeva Datta. 
He had two sons. Mukunda Datta and uh, some uh, some else. Mukunda Datta was uh, in person was after uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu beat him. So Vasudeva Datta said, "Oh my Lord, please." He wanted to take karma, all of the conditioned souls in the universe in our Brahmananda, by let them free, get liberated, and that he will suffer for his, their karma, like Jesus Christ did this. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, because you are my pure devotee, you ask at me this, all Brahmananda already delivered it. Everybody go getting mukti, moksha, we already liberated. But why we are here? Why we are not there? Because, because we should get self-realization that we are liberated. We are liberated, but we cannot understand that we are liberated. We are still on the inertia that we are, oh, I'm conditioned, I'm here, I will die. But we, we are already liberated. Whole Brahmananda was liberated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just 500 years back. And 500 years is just 5 microseconds. Even his print is still warm in Navadvip, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This, his Harinam Sankirtan is going on everywhere. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Hare Krishna, please excuse me. I, I was speaking 15 years, uh, minutes more. If you have some uh, one question, uh, I can, uh, if I can uh, answer, uh, give to. Uh. If you have some question, you can ask. Prabhu, you want some question? Yeah. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.